Hey there, I'm Chris, and today we're diving into everything you need to know about dynamic token rings. So, what are they? A dynamic token ring is basically a way to make tokens more alive and reactive to your game. Instead of being stuck with a single static look, these rings can actually change in real time. That means they can react to what's happening in game. For example, a token might flash or animate when a creature takes damage, or the ring around it that might pulsate when a creature gets targeted. The big benefit here is flexibility. Since this ring can work with all kinds of effects, filters or shaders, creators don't have to tie them to one specific module or system. That means, for the creator, the assets have a bit of an extra value, because they'll also be working with a different project. To simplify this, picture this. You download an adventure that comes with a unique ring design to match its style, you like it much, and you set it as the default ring for the entire world. And at that point, every other token you use automatically has that look, no extra steps needed. And that's not all. We'll also be looking at modules that add their own custom rings, how to tweak images so they fit nicely inside them, and even how to design a brand new one from scratch. While this tutorial has been deconstructed in such a way to only provide minimal information, it will equip you by the end with all the information you need. You'll know how to use, edit and create token rings to really make your tokens stand out. We're going to be using four different modules. Here's what we'll be using. Ready. Reactive dynamic token rings. This one handles the effects I mentioned before, like glowing, flashing or reacting when things happen in game. Chris, Companions of Trade Goods, Dynamic Token Rings. This adds more ring options so you can use right away. This is also my own module, I want to provide a disclaimer. But this is also what we'll be using to create our own Dynamic Token Rings in the later part of the video. Set some extra token ring types. Another pack that brings in even more ring styles. And lastly, Tokenizer. This lets you edit your images so they fit cleanly inside the token ring. Now. There is a Photoshop file provided by the Foundry team. You can open that in any image editors like GIMP or Photoshop if you want to do more advanced rings to the tokens. I'll leave a link to that in the description, but I won't be walking through it in this video as I'm trying to replace it with the usage of Tokenizer. With the long intro out of the way, let's get started. Go into the Foundry VTT add-on modules tab, install each of those, and then make sure you activate them in your world. Once that's done, you'll be ready to dive in. Firstly, let's discuss where you find your dynamic token rings. Go to Game Settings, Configure Settings, and under Core, you'll see them listed just below Language Preferences. Set adds its own dedicated button, so you can jump right into its options. My own module shows up in the drop-down menu with the KCTG tag, making it easy to spot. Lastly, Ready, should already be running once it's installed. By default, it reacts automatically. Red flash when a token takes damage, green flash when it's healed, blue flash when it's targeted, orange and pink flashes for negative and positive conditions. Please keep in mind, Ready is system specific. It does support multiple systems, but depending on what you're using, some effects might not be available. The best approach here is to experiment. Try mixing and matching rings and associated effects until you find a combo that feels right for you. Now that we covered installing the token rings, let's move on and fixing up the images so they actually work with dynamic token rings. For this, we'll be using our last module on our list, Tokenizer, to spruce things up. If you want a deeper dive into how Tokenizer works, especially around masks, check out my earlier video where I covered this in more detail. For this example, I already have an image that has transparency. Click on the avatar and make sure Modify is selected, add the image you want to use, and on the right side, select Use Avatar Image. This should copy the image you have on the left into the token editor. Next, we're interested in adding a mask. Simply hit Add Mask. We want the second option, the one that creates a mask for the lower part of the image. I'll edit it slightly here to bring part of the color that got trimmed. Once you're fully happy with the look, hit Apply. You should now have a rounded image towards the bottom, ready for a ring. Now, open the character sheet and go to Token Appearance. Check the box for Ring Enable and if you have selected KCTG Golden Ring, you'll notice that it looks a little bit smaller than the token's edge. 
To fix this, head back into dynamic tokering settings and we will adjust the subject scale correction to 1.08. This setting solves the issue here, but keep in mind different rings might need different fine tuning. And with that, you got your very own token setup and working with dynamic token rings. So quick recap, we've installed the modules, set up dynamic token rings, use tokenizer to get our images fitting properly. Then we drop that token into the game, enable the ring, adjusted the scale and ended up with a clean token that reacts the way we want. Next, I'll be covering on how to create your own dynamic token ring. If that's not something you're interested in, then hey, hit the buttons below to please the almighty algorithm, drop a comment if you have any questions or thoughts and be on your way to check my other videos. Or if you have any questions, I'm always available. For making your own rings, any image editor will work. Tools like GIMP or Affinity Photo will get the job done. But for this walkthrough, I'll be using Photoshop. We'll also need a way to code plain text. Notepad++ or Visual Studio Code are both solid options. I'll be using a Visual Studio, but don't worry, I'll keep it as simple and straightforward as possible. In Photoshop, I already have a template set up for making the token rings, but if you're building your own from scratch, here's how I recommend setting it up. Canvas size, 2048 pixels wide by 1024 pixels tall. Add guides every 512 pixels to help with centering. Have two solid black squares each 1024 by 1024 as placeholders to keep everything aligned. A few things to be aware before diving in. The left half of the image is where your effect will show up. The right half is your static background, unless you plan to animate it. Another mention, Foundry's default tokens use multiple sprite sheets for different size tokens, and each size does come with its own texture. That's the reason why earlier we had to adjust the subject scale correction to line things up. Making a sprite sheet yourself isn't too hard, but the JSON file that defines it gets more complicated. Just keep that in mind. Back in Photoshop, just to create a little bit of texture, I'm going to add some style using bevel and emboss, plus contour. I'm going to play around with the settings up until I found something that feels right and go ahead and save. I'm providing this example as this can be used with already purchase token rings you might already have which are not currently dynamic. We can place the ring on the left and edit the background on the right. Try to keep the positions exact. When it comes time to save, you could export as PNG, but WebP is way better for the file size without losing quality. Go to File, save a copy, navigate to My Foundry Modules folder, then into Assets, Ring, and create a new folder for your design. I'll simply call mine testing. From the file drop down, pick WebP and set quality around 89%, which keeps the image sharp without bloating the file size. Be advised, naming rules matter. No capital letters, no spaces, use dashes instead or the minus sign. Breaking those rules can cause errors. Also, bonus points if you notice my little error. Now into Visual Studio Code. It will look empty at first. We're going to open the Explorer panel with Ctrl Shift E. You'll see I already have my modules added. Let me remove those. Click the blue button and add my own module folder in it. Inside, you should have the full folder structure. We're going to be looking in Assets, Rings, and we're going to copy the JSON file from the Chrome folder and paste it into the new testing folder. This will give us a working structure and lets Foundry know that the new image is a valid token ring. A copy and paste, even in Explorer, should work fine here. Next, we're going to open the JSON file. We're going to go straight to the bottom, at Meta, where the image name is listed, and we're going to be replacing the old name with the new folder name, in my case, testing. If this step was not set up correctly, Foundry will error out. A couple of things to note in this JSON. One section will define the background info, while the other section defines the token ring settings. The colored band specifically is setting controls from the center outward, where the ring effects begins and ends. 
One last thing and we're almost done. Open up index.js. Should be in the main folder. Here we need to register the new ring so it shows up in game in the drop down menu. At the top, under const rings, add a new entry named exactly like your folder. For me, that's going to be testing. Don't forget the quotation marks and if you're adding it in the middle of the list as I did, also add the comma as needed. Once that's done, save both files, the JSON and index, and then start Foundry backup. If everything was set up correctly, open Foundry, head over to core settings, and you should be able to see the new KCTG testing ring option. You'll notice in my end, I still need to fix the visual error I saved with the background I forgot to remove. But that wraps up this tutorial. One small warning before we finish, every time my module gets updated, it will override the index file and remove the lines you've added. So keep that in mind if you're planning to maintain custom ring. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to hit the buttons below. Helps a lot.